Historic Zoning Commission meeting. Um, I have a few preliminary announcements and then we'll get started. Uh, for the uh, public hearing, for each case there will be a public hearing. We ask that the applicant keep their presentation to under 10 minutes. They may reserve two minutes as a rebuttal. We ask that the public keep their comments to two minutes unless they have previously requested in writing for five minutes as a representative of a group or organization. And that two minutes is important because uh, a lot of times people don't pay attention to that. So uh, craft your thoughts carefully so they'll fit within the two minutes. Pursuant to the provision of section 2.68.030 of the Metropolitan Code of Laws, notice is hereby given that a final hearing before the commission is appealable to the Chancery Court of Davidson County or the Circuit Court of Davidson County via statutory writ of certiorari, you are advised to seek your own independent legal counsel to ensure that your appeal is filed in a timely manner and that all procedural requirements are met. You should also seek independent legal advice regarding the applicability of the writ of certiorari to the specific decision of the Historic Zoning Commission. The consent agenda, items on the consent agenda will be voted on at a single time. No individual public hearing will be held, nor will the commission debate these items unless a member of the audience or the commission requests that the item be removed from the consent agenda. First item is adoption of the minutes. Uh, do I hear a motion for adoption of the minutes of the prior meeting? Move to approve. Second. Okay, thank you. Uh, Second. It's moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Uh, all opposed? Thank you. Uh, uh, Madam Zieg Ziegler, do we have any changes to the agenda today? We have quite a few this time. Uh, the following items have been removed from the agenda. 1418 Forest, 1422 Gartland, 1812 Fifth Avenue North, 1401 Holly, 600 Fatherland. And then we have requests to remove the following two items from the consent agenda, so they'll be moved to the end of the overall agenda. And that's 1805 Lakehurst and 949 Maxwell. And we'd also like to request that 1204 Russell be moved up to just after the consent agenda, as we have an interpreter here and don't want to make her <laughs> sit here longer than she has to. Sure. Could you go through those just one more time? Sure. So removed completely is 1418 Forest, 1422 Gartland, 1812 Fifth Avenue North, 1401 Holly, 600 Fatherland. And then removed from consent and put to the end of the agenda is 1805 Lakehurst and 949 Maxwell. And then we'd like to move 1204 Russell up to just after the consent agenda. Do I hear a motion for approval of the revised agenda? So moved. Second. Second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Aye. Okay. We can move on into the agenda. Do we have any council member con uh, comments? Okay. Council member Withers? Okay. Good. Seeing none. All right, um, the first item on the consent agenda is the administrative permits issued for the prior month. Um, and then 1805 Lakehurst is moved to new business, 949 Maxwell is moved to new business. Um, 1402 Beechwood Avenue is an addition. Uh, 3910 Valley Road is an addition. 2006 26th Avenue South is an addition. Uh, 3615 Meadowbrook Avenue is an addition. Uh, 1002 Paris Avenue is an addition and an outbuilding. 313 South 7th Street is an addition. Uh, 212 Fairfax is an addition and outbuilding. Uh, staff recommends approval of the items on the consent agenda with the applicable conditions, finding the applications to meet the design guidelines of their respective overlays. Thank you. Are there any comments on the consent agenda? Do you have a motion for approval? I move to approve the consent agenda. Okay. 
All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, uh, good afternoon, commissioners. Uh, this is presentation about 12, 1204 Russell Street. Uh, this is a property you've seen before. Uh, after the, exceeding the scope of a permit to demolish a non contributing rear addition back in July, this project came to you as a show cause hearing. Uh, at that time, they'd removed portions of the historic house and cons started construction of a two story addition uh, that were not covered by any plans or permits. The decision of the commission at that meeting was to require the applicant to construct uh, portions, reconstruct portions of the building that had been demolished without approval and to submit plans for the addition. Uh, the uh, applicant came back to you last month with plans for an addition, and that was approved with a condition that work on the addition was not to start until the reconstruction had been satisfactorily completed. Uh, in the course of our inspections, uh, throughout the process, uh, it's become apparent that additional changes have been made to the historic house, including uh, but not limited to changes to the raw, uh, cross gabled roof form of the gabled L form of the house and the front porch. These portions of the house were still intact when this was first seen by the commission as a show cause and did not need to be reconstructed. Um, a lot of as I said, unapproved alterations to the building have been made, and they're not all evident until you look at before and after photos side by side. And when you do that, as I'm showing here, you see that the front gable of the roof has been rebuilt with a lower slope and possibly higher ridge, which results in the eaves being higher. Uh, in the before photo on the left, you see that the eaves of the primary roof were in line with the eaves of the projecting bay, but now they are higher. You can also see uh, by a dark line on the gable field wall, just below the trim band at the underneath the raking eave, you can see the line of the original roof pitch uh, and then the new roof tapers up at a different angle. Uh, in addition to the left and right, in addition to the eaves being higher, you can see that the left and right eaves are not the same height as each other. Uh, and also they have a different form with copper flashing pitched forward. Um, the pitch and eave height differences are also present on the left side uh, of the cross gabled roof. The roof of the projecting bay appears to be steeper as well. And there are other details like the thickness of trim and corner boards and the presence of a trim band at the bottom of the siding. Uh, those have also changed. On the front porch, the front porch uh, previously had a con concrete block foundation with a concrete slab porch floor. Uh, and those materials may have been original, although um, sometimes a historic house like this would have had a wooden porch floor. Um, and the image on the right shows as it is now um, that previous porch from the left photo still exists uh, inside the porch that's been built on the right. The builder has constructed a brick wall around the previous porch, uh, which expands a footprint um, by about a f 10 inches to, to a foot in each direction, forward, left, and right. Um, and there's a pressure treated deck floor that sits above the existing concrete floor. Um, as a re result, that causes the porch roof footprint to expand, uh, moving the columns forward of where they sat previously. I'm told that the previous columns exist inside those uh, square wooden columns you see in the picture on the right. They have been wrapped with a like a cedar one by. Uh, and at some point, the applicant also started construction of an outbuilding. Uh, the foundation has been constructed and walls have been framed, but there is no roof, uh, nor is there a floor to the outbuilding. Uh, no permits have been issued for this by us or by the codes department. Uh, we requested plans for the outbuilding and we received elevation drawings, but not a site plan. So at this point, we're not able to uh, formally start reviewing it um, until we can determine setbacks and things like that. So that's uh, 
outstanding as a violation as well. All in all, uh, staff recommends disapproval of the reconstructed porch gable and uh, cross gable and porch as currently reconstructed um, and instructs that these features should be reconstructed as shown in the reconstruction permit HCP uh, 2021-05-2924 with photographs and approved materials and that to be done in the next 60 days. Uh, with details such as the wider corner boards to match the plans and photographs also in the next 60 days, uh, that the applicant should provide a um, complete application for the partially constructed outbuilding so it may be re reviewed, and uh, that the applicant should provide a summary returning to the Historic Zoning Commission at each meeting until the reconstruction is completed. Uh, and again, staff recommends that no additional permits are issued for additions, outbuildings, or any other work until the reconstruction is satisfactory, completed, and approved by the commission. Thank you, Sean. Any questions for staff? Thank you. Uh, the applicant, prepare to speak. To come to the microphone with the red light on and. Please step up to the microphone and state your name and address, please. Mi nombre es Jose Hurtado, 1204 Russell Street, Nashville. Jose Hurtado? Uh -huh. My name is uh, Jose Hurtado. The address is Russell at 1204. Um, Russell Street. Russell Street. You have two minutes to Usted make your presentation. Oh, sí, este, lo que dice... I'm sure you have 10 minutes. <laughs> okay. Ese, lo que dice Shin es de, pues, que, que no está bien y eso, pero, pues, yo lo medí, aparte, un, un, un ingeniero que ahorita va a venir, también él hizo una carta de que todo estaba bien, pues, y él miró la casa anteriormente. Todas um, las medidas. Um, what did you say of the uh, front, the... Uh, the, the, pitch, the, roof. Uh, la eleva, um, the elevation of the roof. Um, Could you step a closer itself. to the microphone, please? You speak up a little bit. Thank you. Um, what was uh, say here that the uh, elevation of the uh, the roof? I I measure myself, and um, and then later it was measured by the engineer. And they all uh, uh, confirm that the measurement is well okay. The engineer is coming to this meeting also today. Y, y aparte me hizo una carta que le mandé al, al señor Gure. Okay. Una carta del ingeniero. And then the engineer uh, um, made a letter that I sent to uh, Mr. Waters. Waters, my uh, rep counsel. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And the house was seen before I started the job. And it looked like uh, everything was okay, and uh, he's supposed to be here, but I don't see him here yet. It could be that we can wait on this engineer that he's supposed to come so he can explain better about the measurements. Or we can show it. Or I can send the card that I have in an email. Or I can also show the letter that he wrote. I keep it on an, an email he sent. You do have the letter from the engineer. And I, since these are really more design issues than structural issues, I'm not sure how helpful that might be. And we do only have an interpreter for a short period of time, so it might be best to move forward. Again, you have that letter in your packet. Okay. Okay. 
Okay, pues las, las cosas son más acerca de medidas que estructurales. Sí, uh -huh. sí aparte la, 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 el, de lo de las columnas, las columnas solo están tapadas, pero son las mismas columnas. And um, talking about the columns, the columns, um, they are just covered on the outside, but the original columns are in the inside. Y el, el del, lo del brick, eso en, en los drawings eh, y, eh, dice ahí que, que, re, que lo reemplace con con ladrillo, por eso también fue una equivocación mía, o sea, pero pues yo hablé con Shin para ver si lo podríamos cubrir con estoco, lo, el brick, él me dijo que sí, pero a los cinco minutos me llamó y me mandó un email y me dijo que no, que ya no trabajara más. And what well, refers to about the bricks in the outside, um, I replaced the bricks, I know it was too wrong, I also, we, um, I was told that we can cover that with a stucco, but then um, I was also told to stop, so I haven't done much about it. Sí, dijo Shin que algo otras veces habían este, aceptado que cubriéramos con esto, que él anteriormente la, el staff había probado eso. And Shin told me that in cases before, they have accepted that the brick can be covered with a stucco, um, that the, the board had accepted that. Mm -hmm. That coverage. Y pero ahorita pues ya ha hecho muchas cosas y o sea ha tenido a lo mejor errores pero también mis mis ventanas ya fueron aprobadas la puerta o sea el roof también fue aprobado por el staff creo que también pues estoy es, es todo eso es nuevo para mí pero estoy tratando de hacer lo mejor que puedo. Uh, I know I did a lot of mistakes but some things like my windows my doors and the roof have also been approved I had uh, to improve what I was doing um, until now. El, el siding también lo hice a cuatro pulgadas, como me dijeron, four inch review. And the siding has also been done to four inches, like it was told in the los, board review. Todos los corvos y las cosas viejitas, todas las guardé y las he restablecido de una por una, y o sea, todo lo, lo he hecho pues con histórico, como uh, estaba. Okay, pues, Clarification need to know what he's talking about. Todo lo, lo del bay window, pues lo hice todo como iba, lo estoy haciendo uno por uno a mano. Sí, lo de lo de ahí lo las historic design del bay window aquí está. Aquí se mira mejor. Um, all the the window and the bay window, I historic have um, I have made it like a, in the historic design. Lo hice uno por uno a mano como estaban y todo. It, they were, have been made um, one by one by hand, like they used to be before. Y los corvos también de los lados, esos todos se los estoy poniendo ya. Corvos. Sí, corvos, algo así. And the corvos. Uh, on the, side. the interpreter doesn't know what he means about he mentioned some corvos. Um, the corvos, uh, he means, could, are the old up, ones. If you could get a little bit closer to the microphone. Uh, I think he means the, the structure, the wooden structure under the roof. Um, he has fixed the old ones and installed them back again. They are no new. O sea, todo lo estoy tratando de hacer como estaba. Pues claro que he tenido errores, pero mira que está. I've been trying to do everything like it used to be before. I know I committed um, mistakes, but... Um, todo lo estoy haciendo así como estaba la casa antes. But I've been trying to, um, to make it the way the house was before. Sí, pues... Yo, o sea, estoy tratando de hacer las cosas lo mejor que pueda, pero todo esto es nuevo para mí, pero... O sea, pues yo, I'm trying to do the things the best I can. All these regulations are new to me. Pues, o sea, que, que me disculpen por las cosas que he hecho malas, pero yo lo que quiero ya es terminar mi casa, porque también, o sea, yo estoy batallando mucho con mm -hmm. que no tengo casa ahorita, estoy rentando y todo eso. Y pues. And um, I'm sorry, I, I want to be uh, sorry and apologize for my mistakes. I also want you to understand that I've been uh, working on this house and struggling to finish this house. In the meantime, I'm renting at another place.
pues yo lo único que quiero es que me den la oportunidad de terminar mi casa y yo voy a, a tratar de hacer lo mejor que yo pueda. And I just want the opportunity to finish this house and I want to finish it the best way I can. Y como ellos quieren, pues. And the way you want it. Y yo no, yo no quiero cambiar la casa ni quiero cambiar las regulaciones de ellos. Yo estoy haciendo todo lo que me han pedido. I don't want to change the style of the house. I don't want to go against your regulations. I just want the opportunity to finish this house and um, let me uh, or allow me to do it on my pace. And that's all. And thank you very much. And, um, and uh, God bless you. Thank you. Are there any questions for the applicant? Thank you. I appreciate it. We're all looking for the same thing to to comply with the guidelines and to get it corrected. Uh, open public hearing. Are there anyone who wishes to speak on either behalf or, or against this project? Councilman Withers. I'll, I'll uh, try this. Um, so I'm District 6 Councilmember Brett Withers. Been working with Mr. Hurtado um, for a while on this. Um, and um, I appreciate Sean bringing out that the detail about the gable in particular uh, because it's one of those where uh, uh, when I looked at it, at least in the newer version, I, you know, was trying to decipher what the difference was between the two. And I think Sean has kind of specified that a little bit more. Um, one of the things I think uh, overall with this reframing in particular of the gable is that I'm wondering if it's possible, this is my perception and mine only, but is that the, the, the pitch difference I think is pretty slight. Um, however, I do think that the way that the eaves come down on the front facade is important. So I'm wondering if it's possible that the commission would consider um, not requiring to deconstruct all of that gable, but sort of reconfigure, I'm, I'm guessing, the left-hand side of the, uh, of the gable to, so that the eave heights come down to the same height on the both side. I'm, I'm wondering if that specific correction might be helpful. Um, as, as a compromise here rather than deconstructing and reframing literally the entire roof. Um, it appears to me as well as that it might be possible to raise, uh, to make a slight adjustment to the bay window roof as well uh, to get that a little bit closer to the way that it was before. Um, other than that, I think that is relatively slight compared to the very large number of issues that we've had with this project overall. Um, I will attest that um, I have stopped by a couple of times just to check on things and Mr. Hurtado and I believe family members of his uh, and uh, other community members are working very hard on this project. And in particular, one thing that I have been impressed by is the work to sort of reconstruct the fish scale siding in the bay window. I think there's a lot of hard work that is going into that. I do believe that Mr. Hurtado wants to do a good job to bring this house back. It, it was in precarious position before, and I think he's wanting to do the right thing about it, um, but definitely needs to wait until things get approved first. I, I think he agrees to that too. Uh, in terms of the porch columns, that's another item where, you know, I'd look at it and couldn't really tell what was different. And I think Sean's information is helpful about that. Um, in terms of whether it is best to uh, leave the porch columns as they are or to, re or to reconstruct them as they were. I don't think either one of those is a major deal, but um, the construction of the porch foundation is a bigger deal. And I, I'm not, I let Mr. Hurtado know that I'm not able to advise him about how to resolve that. In my experience, I, I had shared with him a lot of times brick steps were not historically done. And so a lot of people think that that's a way to look historic for brick steps and it's not really. Um, so I'm not certain what to do about that. But um, I, I think the main thing that I would ask uh, for this piece that's before you today uh, in terms of reconstructing the historic house is to maybe try to find a compromise to make s slight adjustments to that roof form and that, that uh, front gable um, without tearing the whole roof off and starting it back over again. I think that would be uh, 
understandable, but uh, also kind of punitive when, when there may be some more subtle uh, adjustments that could be made to keep this on track, at least for that portion of it. Um, so with that, I'll you know, leave it up to the commission. I do think that given the uh, some of the communication challenges that have happened, however they have happened, we have had several, and, and I do think that coming back before the commission monthly is a good idea, um, just so we can all uh, stay on top of things before they get too far along and then we're on doing work that was done previously. So those are, those are my comments, but I appreciate Mr. Hurtado uh, at least reaching out to me. Sometimes I maybe wish he would do so earlier than he has, um, but he has really tried to maintain good communication with me, at least to let me know what's going on. And I believe that he and his uh, team that's working with him want to do the right thing, uh, particularly as it pertains to the front of this house. And um, I, I think we're a good part of the way there when we consider that um, earlier this year we were looking at potential demolition of the house. I think we're in a better place than that for sure. But um, some process improvements would be helpful. And, and in this case, for that, that gable, I'm just wondering if there aren't some more subtle solutions that could be done rather than tearing it down and reconstructing it from scratch. But those are just my suggestions. So thank you so much, commissioners, for your patience with this one and for your thoughtfulness. Thank you, Councilman. Yes, sir. Uh, hello, I'm uh, Paul John Boulevard. I'm the architect, uh, 1222 Eastdale Avenue, in Nashville, Tennessee. Um, I just wanted to, to step up and, and make a comment that Jose has been very communicative to me in kind of the back and forth through this process and trying to understand where and if he makes missteps and the resolutions on, on how to rectify those missteps. Um, I want you to understand that he has communicated to me that none of this is meant to be in, been in, any, in any way kind of malicious or short-sighted. So I, I think his words are earnest in him wanting to repair whatever situations that are, that are incongruent with what the commission wants to do. I think some of it is kind of in the fine detail of the reconstruction of a, of a structure. So I think that there's uh, a, a, a good opportunity to communicate what those standards are in a position like this. So um, I just wanted to kind of mention that, that that was, that it is in, in earnest. Um, also in relationship to the outbuilding, we are currently in the development of the drawings for the outbuilding and we will have the, uh, the outstanding items needed to be presented shortly. So just wanted to make that make those comments thank you all right thank you any anyone else wish to speak on this project we'll close public hearing commissioners commissioner price what do you sure. um, I think this, this situation is, is very unfortunate. It was a very lovely house before all of this mess started snowballing. Um, I was not at last month's meeting, but I was at the, when this initially came up, uh, when it was discovered that the building had been going on without any permits whatsoever. And as I recall, we were pretty lenient with the applicant at the time. I mean, we gave him another 30 or 60 days to work with staff to rectify with the explicit instructions not to do anything else until that was done. And yet here we are, more construction has happened, more removal of original character defining details that did not need to be removed in the first place. I mean, we are, after all, a board concerned with historic preservation and we now have a basically totally newly reconstructed house here. Um, I, I support the staff recommendation that all work needs to stop and Needs to everything going forward needs to be closely coordinated, um, perhaps with the architect especially. Uh, every decision needs to to make sure it's not running afoul of the guidelines, and um, the whole th it was it, it was a, a really nice contributing house that's just uh, been remuddled, as people as preservationists might say. So that's it. I, I support the staff recommendation, and and uh, I think I could. As Councilman Withers mentioned, if there's some 
compromise on the front gable so the whole thing doesn't have to be rebuilt again. Uh, I, I could be in support of something like that. But that's about as far as I'd like to go. So that's it. Thank you. Yeah, I do echo what Commissioner Price said. Um, and again, I don't know, you know, all the correct terminology, but I do also echo kind of support for our, some sort of compromise on, you know, bringing it more in line with the, the looks of how it was, um, just as Commissioner Price just said, without maybe tearing down the whole thing again and, and a total, um, since it's already now new, um, anyways. So, um, but I don't know that, you know, that I'd need help with those, you know, defining what that would be exactly, I guess. Um, I, again, I echo everybody else's concerns there. I, I see that, um, you know, I, I just want to say I, su I support exactly what you said uh, and uh, David and council and, um, so, I'm in concurrence. Um, I also, uh, what all of the commissioners have said so far, I, I am in agreement as well. They've, they've said what, what I'm thinking and feeling as well. I would love to see this get resolved <laughs> and um, would be willing to make some concessions on the front so it doesn't have to all be rebuilt if we can get it just more in line um, but just uh, yeah it's just uh, unfortunate and I'm, I'm just looking forward to seeing this get resolved yes indeed this is unfortunate uh, I do understand uh, you know uh, applicant homeowner Mr. Hart Toto where he's coming from but our job is preservation of historical structure. So sometimes little angle, little height, little detail makes big difference. So I think, you know, homeowner, Mr. Hatoto, thinks it, he was doing the right thing, but he was not fully grasping importance of the guideline. So I really, uh, you know, suggest Mr. Hatoto not to do anything before he does anything you know, consult and double check, make sure what he's about to do is the right thing within the guideline. Because otherwise, more he touches, more creates, more problem. So I really would like, you know, staff is trying to accommodate and try to give great guidelines. So I really would like Mr. Hatoro to reach out and connect with the staff and follow specifically guideline without going outside of the guideline. So by doing so, I think we can uh, come up to the solution about, you know, just keep going and what he thinks in his head, historical preservation, and what we have as a guideline is two totally two different things. So I would like him to understand those differences and then would like him to follow precisely what staff recommend. Dr. Williams? Um, I'd just like to echo the other commissioner's comments. This is um, very unfortunate. And as I listen to it, it seems as though there's a lot of the communication issue here, and I'm wondering if if we have something in place where we can can uh, can monitor or check what he's doing along the way, um, so they don't get to the point to where we are looking at new construction at a, another meeting down the road. Um, but all as I say, I echo what the other commissioners have said, and I um, I concur with staff recommendation. And one comment that I would have uh, uh, to the applicant is that it's especially hard to put things back the way they were once they're no longer that way and you're trying to remember what was there. I would strongly recommend that you work closely with the staff uh, to, to make sure that all the moldings, all the profiles, all the shapes, the width of the boards, the thickness of the boards uh, match what was there before and they can help you to, to determine that if the evidence is no longer there. Uh, with all that, do we have a motion? Don't be
be hesitant. Commissioner yeah, I guess I'm, I'm, I'm not sure, you know, the, the, I guess the easy motion would be just going with staff recommendations, which I think would be, you know, the full removal of what's been built. So that's, you know, I'm not sure specifically, you know, what those items are to maybe call out for, you know, a certain sort of compromise or if, if we're just saying, you know, no, we need it to be completely redone um, would be my, you know, I'm not sure how to, what quick, we want. Quick question. Was the entire roof structure completely rebuilt? I mean, that's how it must have happened, right? Or how do you, how did we arrive at a new, a new uh, pitch? Can you show that photo? Um, I, th I think it got framed over the existing framing and then the original framing got taken out. Maybe that's a better question for the applicant. So it was rebuilt from the inside kind of thing or from the outside in? I yeah, I think that's right. We, we met the applicant on staff and, and that's when we kind of noticed the Eve height being different. Yeah. Like you don't know. I drove by today and I noticed it immediately. So we contemplated, you know, well, if you extend the eaves down to the same height, is that okay? But then they're, then they're overhanging more, and, um, mm -hmm. you know, we didn't have the authority to, you know, that's mm -hmm. basically that's a change that needs to be approved by the commission. Yeah. sort of it's like it's a matter of like if we make one change here, then you're just creating a whole other problem with how <laughs> yeah. it works. So we're kind of ready to take the L on this okay. one. Okay, thank you. That said. Um, well, I wish we had an easy compromise solution. We've we've given a compromise and we've been been lenient, and the construction and the and the mistakes continue to happen. So, I think I'm swinging back to saying I just support the staff recommendation as it's written. Is that a motion? Uh, yes, that is a motion. I move to approve the staff recommendation as it's written. Is there a second? I second that. Motion. Motions been made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Next up is 945 South Douglas, unit number seven. In 2018, the commission approved an SP for the site at 945 South Douglas. 19 houses are planned for the development. The commission approved specific ridge and eave heights and widths for each unit and recommended approval to the planning commission. The SP was approved. The applicant is returning to this commission for final design approval of each unit. You have already approved units one through six. Today, we will look at unit number seven. And I don't know if that really matters for our purposes, but they have renumbered all these units as well. Um, so this unit number seven is actually 945 South Douglas and everything else will have a different address. This unit was approved at one and a half stories with a maximum ridge height of 32 feet and an eave height of 12 feet. The width here was approved at 40 feet. The proposed height and width meet all of the parameters. As you can see here, at the very front of the house, the foundation will drop a bit to accommodate the grade. It's a very steep site. Uh, but staff finds that this is a condition of the site and the resulting height will still be appropriate. Staff finds the proposed design to be appropriate in, ter in terms of form, height, scale, setback and rhythm of spacing, materials, roof shape, orientation, and pr proportion and rhythm of openings. Like all units in this development, the house will have an attached garage. Staff finds that the design is subservient to the main house with appropriate dimensions. It is consistent with the site plan and the massing approved for the SP. In conclusion, staff recommends approval of the proposed house with the conditions that staff review the final materials and utility locations. I think the applicant is here. Do you want to speak? He's available for questions. Do you have questions for me? Good. Uh, no questions. Thank you. Good. Open public hearing. If anyone wishes to speak on behalf of this project, for or against, okay. close public hearing. Uh, commissioners, discussion or a motion? Okay. Okay. 
seems like this is very simple, you know, straightforward case. So for that, I make motion to approve staff recommendation for in regards to 945 South Douglas Avenue, Unit 7. Second. So 17 Linden Avenue is located in Belmont Hillsboro Neighborhood Conservation Zoning Overlay. Um, originally a 1920 bungalow signed the property and was contributing to the district. Back in December of 2019, the property received an interior demo from codes as well as a preservation permit for an addition, which the board approved. On May 20th, 2021, a neighbor contacted staff at the level of demolition. Staff confirmed that all but the ports in the front wall have been demolished. A stop work order was issued since the work at City the scope of, of all the permits issued. The project was reheard by the commission in June 2021 for a show cause hearing. The permit for the addition was rescinded and the applicant was required to reconstruct the building. The reconstruction plans were permitted on June 23rd, 2021. Several site visit, visits and inspections have been conducted to track the progress of the project. The applicant, applicant has been working with staff to verify materials and to confirm that the work conforms with what was approved. The project is close to completion and the applicant requests approval for the reconstruction. The work has followed the approved plans with the exception of the rear wall. The rear wall was left incomplete in anticipation for the rear addition. Uh, a couple of elements have not been installed, including some windows and the shingles. Staff can monitor the project to approve this prior to the final being approved. Based on this and finding that the stored house has been reconstructed following the requirements of the commission, staff recommends the approval of the reconstruction and the reissuance of the permit for an addition at 1710 Linden Avenue. I believe the applicant is here as well. Thank you, Ms. Mitchell. The applicant wish to speak. Hi, I'm CJ Sabia, the owner of Sabia Construction. Uh, I uh, we have we've worked hard to to get the house back to where it was, and again, we sincerely apologize for what happened in literally the span of about four hours while unsupervised. But regardless, here we are five months later, and uh, I ask for your consideration to reinstate the the permit for us to proceed with construction. Uh, for a number of reasons, but I'll keep it short and simple. And uh, I think that the staff recommendation is to allow us to proceed. Is that correct? So I, don't, I have nothing further to add other than to apologize. And, um, you know, we'll just, we'll do, won't let, won't, won't let it happen again. Thank you. So thank you. Uh, and just for the record, could you give us your address too? Your address, could you give us the address for the record? Your uh, address? For the, for the construction company? Uh, yes. Uh -huh. For my company? Yes. 783 Old Hickory Boulevard, Suite 390, Brentwood, 37027. Um, so, yeah. Good. That Excellent. Thank you very much. Thank Any you. questions for the applicant? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Open public hearing. Does anyone wishes to speak regarding this project? Close public hearing. Um, commissioners, discussion or a motion? Uh, I want to say good job on the applicants. Looks like a, a good reconstruction, unfortunately. I mean, it's not the ideal outcome, and I know it wasn't for you either, but uh, it looks looks good to me, so I'm, I'm ready to move forward with uh, approval. Um, so uh, unless there are any other questions or comments, I move for approval of the staff recommendation. Okay. Commissioner Second. Prosper. Second from Commissioner Jones. All in favor? Uh, aye. Uh, all opposed? Motion carries. Next project. So 3505 Central Avenue is contributing instructor, instructor in the Richland West End Conservation Zoning Overlay. The home was constructed circa 1915. 
The violation is in regards to the carport that was constructed in the rear of the home, which was not permitted by staff, and it does not meet the guidelines or the base zoning. The applicant did propose a new design for a carport, which meets the guidelines for reform design, location, and removability, as well as for materials. Typically, we ask that um, outbuildings are separate from the house, but staff finds that this is appropriate since the lot is only 130 feet deep and is along the side. It has a very deep front setback. The carport will need a setback determination. Typically, attached additions need to be at least 20 feet from the rear property line. What is proposed is approximately 5 feet. From the property line, staff finds that the proposed rear setback meets the design guidelines based on the addition's small stair and open nature, as well as the short depth of the lot and the deep front setback. Staff finds that the existing carport to be removed within 60 days and recommends approval of the proposed addition at 3505 Central Avenue with the condition that final approval of materials is obtained. Finding that, the, finding that the condition of the project meets section two of the design guidelines. Public comment has also been provided to on the commission. Any questions for staff? Um, the setback is going to be, what, what is the setback? Currently the, the rear is approximately five feet for the proposed, mm -hmm. typically based on requires at least and 20. And the side is how much? The side's five foot okay. on the right. The applicant here wish to speak. Yes. Good afternoon, members of the commission. I'm Preston Quirk, architect, 2801 Blair Boulevard, Nashville, Tennessee. Um, I got involved with this after uh, Ms. Seeley had had a contractor build the carport you saw a minute ago. Um, she, uh, the commission was made, or the staff was made aware of the violation. Um, she was friends with a friend of mine who asked me to step in. Um, I met with her and came up with the proposed plans that are before you today. Um, she's been very cooperative. She's willing to take this one down soon. She hopes to proceed very quickly um, after this meeting to remove what's there and build what's proposed if the commission would approve it. And you know, I will, I will echo everything staff said that it's, it's a, the backyard has a very shallow backyard and you know, it's a, it's a pretty minimal structure. She just wants to be able to park one car under cover there. So that's, Really, all I have to say. If there's any questions, I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Court. Open public hearing. Anyone wish to speak regarding this project? Close public hearing. Uh, commissioners, discussion or a motion? Um, I have a question about the uh, existing uh, fence. Seems like right next to the. Uh, a uh, kind of rear structure or temporary garage uh, kind of hanging over the existing fence. So does staff know the existing fence is within setback or on the property line? Or Because if we were to uh, approve as a rear addition, doesn't it have to be within the side setback? So I am not sure from that uh, the you know, plan submitted, it clearly state uh, the side setback. So that's my concern. And the problem we have is that fences aren't always built on the property line. Most of the time people assume they are, but they aren't always. And um, we don't review fences, so we don't review the location of it. So that was not a part of our review. So, thank you. So, in that sense, it seems like this new rear addition, the roof is going over or the, over the fence, you know, so that would be my concern. And existing structure, according to the, you know, area review, the structure is slightly going over the existing fence. So, I am concerned if the fence is on the property line and then addition <coughs> the new roof is hung over the property line, so that will be kind of encroaching uh, next door you know, property. Would you like to invite the applicant back? Yes, we would. Okay. Yes, if I could help clarify that point. Um, so the, I guess the starting point for, for my plan when I did this is that the, the, the carport that's there now is pretty much on that fence line you're asking about. 
what's proposed in the new plan is for the, the west side of the carport to line up with a uh, bumped out bay at the dining room that's on the west side of the house. So we do not exceed that. And it might, I think you might be looking at the 3D view that maybe is from a bad angle, a little confusing, but the fence is, is honestly about five feet or so from the post for the carport, and we won't have more than an 18-inch overhang on that side of the carport. So I, I feel like we're, we're at least three and a half feet clear of that fence. And as far as we know, the fence is on the property line, but... Um, you know, I think if, you, if you're looking at that view that's on the screen, that, that white space that's between the posts and the fence is really, it's five feet. It may be a little more than five feet. So I think it's five to six feet, honestly. So the post is actually five feet. So overhang uh, the roof is not extend over the existing fence? That's no, it? and I, I guess the other thing, I can see why you're asking that point, because um, I've set the columns back a little bit from the back of the roof because she's pulling in off a fairly narrow alley, and we've kind of widened that approach coming in just so she doesn't hit a column when she comes in. So the columns are set back, I think, three feet from the back edge of the carport roof. The roof is at the five-foot setback off the back property line. The columns are, are in about eight feet off that back property line, the closest one. I appreciate that because that was my concern because, you know, we don't want... <laughs> Maybe I should have swung my 3D view around right, a, little, right. a little differently. <laughs> yeah, Sorry. so as long as there's a room between the fence and the post and then the roof does not go over uh, the existing fence, uh, I'm no, fine with it. No, it, it Thank you for the clarification. It will not. I appreciate yeah. it. <laughs> Thank you. Other comments, discussion, a motion? No, um, with that, um, good clarification regarding 3505 Central Avenue. I move for approval with all staff recommendations. Good. Commissioner. Who was the second? Uh, and Commissioner Johnson for the second. We have a motion and second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Thank you. Next project. Oops. Okay, next up is 1501 Fatherland. This is an application for infill and an outbuilding on a vacant corner lot in Lachlan Springs. The project was approved by the commission in August with conditions, including the condition that the height be reduced to a maximum of 24 to 25 feet from average existing grade at the front. The applicant revised and submitted this version of the house that you see here on the screen, which is 25 feet from finished floor or about 26 feet, eight inches from average grade at the front. The remainder of the plan has not changed, including the outbuilding, so I'm just gonna focus on this height issue. There were many conversations regarding infill on this lot over the past few years between multiple different staff members, the former owner and this applicant. The applicant has included an email from me wherein I discussed ridge heights from finished floor instead of from grade. And this comes from a time when the applicant was considering dropping the grade in an effort to gain an increase in overall height. And it did confuse and muddy the conversation a little bit. However, in our original feedback to the applicant back in March, we stated that the maximum appropriate height would be 24 to 25 feet from grade, and that was also the recommendation that appeared in the final staff recommendation report and what you approved. The applicant has provided this streetscape to show how the proposed design fits into the context on the block. They have shaded in a box above each picture to indicate the tallest point of that structure. Staff found the result to be a bit misleading as very few of these houses have full massing that actually rises to that highest level, Many of the houses have a pyramidal roof form where only a small peak of the roof rises to the highest point while the majority of the massing is several feet lower. So staff made some very rough adjustments in an attempt to incorporate the roof shapes into this streetscape. Despite the top peaks of some of those roofs, which according to the applicant rise to around 30 feet, staff finds that that main massing of the historic context is several feet lower. If the applicant were proposing a similar roof form where the maximum height was also reached by just a small roof peak, that peak could certainly match the highest peaks in the context. But the applicant proposes a front and side gabled house that exceeds the height of every historic house on its side of the street and maintains the maximum height for its full 30 feet of width, as opposed to having just a small peak that reaches that full height. 
According to the applicant streetscape, this yellow house at 1508 Fatherland is the tallest historic structure on the block. They report that its maximum height from average grade is about 30.7 feet. Staff measured and then another staff member remeasured the front gable here and we got 24 feet from grade actually on both of these houses. That peak just doesn't appear to be an additional six feet tall behind it. Um, perhaps their measurements were taken from a lower point of grade, I'm not sure. But despite what the height of that rear peak might be, with these front gables measuring at 24 feet from grade, as per staff's measurements, staff finds that a maximum height of 25 feet from grade would be appropriate for the proposed infill. The proposed 26 feet 8 inches with a side gabled form would be two and a half feet taller than these front gables and would exceed an appropriate contextual height. Staff recommends approval with the conditions that the ridge height shall be reduced to be no more than 24 to 25 feet as measured, measured from average grade at front. The finished floor shall be consistent with finished floor heights of adjacent historic structures. Staff shall approve the materials and staff shall approve the utility locations. Um, I know the applicant is here and wants to speak. Do you have questions for me? Okay, thanks. Thank you, Ms. Warren. The applicant uh, like to speak. If you please state your name and your address. Okay, great. Thank you. Hey, good afternoon. My name is Brett Diaz, two two one four Eleventh Avenue South, uh, in Nashville. Um, thanks for hearing this case again. I know we've been um, back and forth on this one quite a bit. Um, so we're really just asking for a small increase to the previously approved plan. Um, we do have an email from uh, August 4th. I'm not sure if that made it into your packet or not, where it was stated that um, the maximum appropriate height um, was 25 feet from the finished floor. Now we've designed this house with a slab on grade such that we have no structure between the foundation and the finished floor. And so we're just hoping to get to the 25 feet from finished floor, essentially to avoid a complete redesign of this project. Um, I know it's not really part of the application process, but we've reduced the first floor ceiling height from 10 feet to nine feet. And as you know, it's currently recommended to be approved, we'd have to reduce even further. And I know, you know his, there are pre plenty of precedent for historic houses with lower ceiling height. The reality is in today's market with the price we've paid for the land and the, you know, everything that it's costing to build these new homes, it's just not market to have such a low first floor ceiling height. So we would essentially have to redesign the whole house, um, you know, lose a bunch of backyard, just spread our square footage over the first floor um, to get that ceiling height. And um, I know that's not your issue, but usually, you know, we're, we're, you know, I've worked with this staff and commission for like 15 years. Usually it's feet that we're apart. It's inches in this case. Um, we sit at the absolute lowest point of the entire street. Um, there are several historic homes that are taller. It's not to the front peak, it's the absolute height of the home. Uh, we had them measured by a surveyor. There is a stamped surveyor's exhibit in our um, submittal. We went through great time and expense to put this together. So we would not be the, the tallest home. Um, furthermore, there were several infills on our street. I know they're not part of the context, but there is a precedent for taller homes being approved. Further, when you take the absolute height, um, height from sidewalk to the top of the home, we're much shorter than previous, previously approved infill homes and a good percentage of the historic context because some of the homes are six, seven feet to the finished floor from the sidewalk. Um, and we essentially sit right at sidewalk level with where we are on, on the street. Um, so, yeah, I would, I would ask for 25 feet from finished floor, um, essentially to avoid a redesign of this project. It's really just a few inches beyond what was approved previously. Um, and essentially, you know, there are 
there is precedent for this. Uh, we're dealing with a lot that has some, some cross slope. We're, we're going to keep the foundation to the absolute minimum. And I think it's easier also to, um, for us to work with the staff when we're talking about measurement from finished floor versus measurement from grade. You know, where in the grade is it measured? You know, we can take this top of the slab to the ridge and we can stay within a 25 feet uh, maximum there. And I think it's just an easier, sort of more objective um, measurement to stay within. So thank you for your time um, and respectfully would ask that you approve a 25 feet from first floor, finished floor, and we'll do our absolute best to keep the slab height to the bare minimum to keep this house as low as possible. Thank you. So I do have one question. What, so the question I have is, is what are you planning now? What are you, what are you calculating as far as the difference between the finished floor and the grade, the average of the grade in the front? Um, on the right side, where the, where the grade is highest, we'll keep it to the absolute minimum. So just whatever the um, siding manufacturer recommends, which is about six inches from finished grade to the siding. Now, there is some cross grade, so I believe it's more like a foot and a half or so on the left side of the house. Um, we had pre previously proposed an idea to lower the house, kind of sink the house with a small retaining wall on the one side, but staff didn't think that was appropriate. So I think the best we can do now is keep the right side of the home as low as possible, perhaps even use some PVC siding to get that, that uh, finished floor even lower to the ground. But you know we, we are just having to work with a slightly sloped lot, and so our, our left side of the house will be a foot to a foot and a half um, out of the ground. Okay, good. Any other questions for the applicant? Thank you. Thank you. Good. Open public hearing. Does anyone wishes to speak regarding this project? Close public hearing. Uh, commissioners, discussion. I'll start with you, Dr. Williams. Could you, do you have thoughts about this project? Okay. Um, no more than I, I appreciate the presentation we just received and I um, I'm, I'm moved to um, embrace what staff has submitted uh, I really do appreciate you know st staff's uh, analysis I have seen comparing you know how applicant measure the grade and how staff you know measuring the grade and still having uh, discrepancy. For example, 1506 and 1508 Fatherland Street house, you know, yellow house and a blue house, you know, staff's measurement is uh, 24 foot from the grade, but applicant measurement is 26 inch and 26 feet and 8 inches. So there's a discrepancy. And so for whatever the reason, I think probably, you know, applicant and, you know, staff may be kind of seeing the same thing, but, you know, uh, I think staff's analysis is what I feel really comfortable with, and especially this design, uh, you know, full side gable, that roof, you know, shape makes much, much bigger than, you know, uh, actually it will be. So I understand sometimes, you know, uh, applicant does not want to change even slight change to, you know, change the roof uh, style or, you know, some portion of the roof to make it a little smaller. But uh, if, you know, that's the case, nonetheless, uh, historical content, you know, height and appearance and mass and is massing and scale is an important element of the historical context. So I am in support of staff recommendation. I do not feel compelled to give extra foot and, you know, nearly two feet uh, to the height. So I am in support of the staff recommendation. Other comments from commissioners? I 
was just going to say, I, I realize this is a difficult lot being at the bottom and, and with the grade and kind of catching the water in that location. I think the recommendation of staff to keep that slab up out of grade is a, is a wise one to, to avoid water issues. Um, so I know, I mean, I know there's a, a, a difficulty here working with the grade, but I am, I am also in support of the staff recommendations for, um, for the height and how that kind of relates to the rest of the street. Is that a motion? Go ahead, sure. Uh, this is a conversation we have a lot for infill houses is height and context and immediate context and it's going to come up later in, in another, at least one more case before us today. We've been pretty consistent as a commission, uh, as, since I've been on it anyway, of um, holding applicants to what the immediate historic context is. And I don't see, this house was originally a, one, a modest one-story bungalow. There was a saga with its demolition. I won't go back into all that, but you know, it's also surrounded by mostly one-story buildings, and so I don't see why we, as a commission, should could, should change our precedents for holding to what the immediate context is for, for this. They could build a nice one or a smaller one and a half story. I think there's room for it. Um, that's where we that's where we are, I think, as a commission, and so I support every, the staff recommendation and, and previous comments. Okay. Um, with regards to 1501 Fatherland Street, um, I move for approval with the, all of the conditions that the staff has um, recommended, including the height recommendation. Okay. We have a motion from Commissioner Fitz. Is there a second? second? Is that a second, Dr. Williams? Yes. Okay. Good. Good. Okay. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. All right, the next item is 308 Broadway. The building located at 308 Broadway is a three-story circa 1890 Victorian brick commercial structure that contributes to the historic context of the Broadway Historic Preservation Zoning Overlay. Um, as background, there are currently active violations on the site uh, for alterations of windows, string lighting, and unpermitted menu signs. Um, those items will come before you at next month's meeting. Um, however, we did receive a complete application for a projecting sign uh, for this month. Uh, the applicant proposes to install a projecting sign uh, in the same location as the previously permitted Crazy Town projecting sign, which was in this building. Uh, as proposed, the sign exceeds the allotment um, for the building as the maximum uh, signage allotment for the building is 56 square feet while the proposed projecting sign is approximately 69 square feet. The plans also note marquee bulbs along the left side of the sign. Um, the applicant has stated that these are not bare bulbs but rather Edison style LED globes. Um, staff has requested more information to uh, confirm the, the bulb type um, as bare bulbs are not permitted by the design guidelines. Um, however, we have not received that information to date. Uh, the letters of the sign are open face neon and the applicant has requested a modification for chasing lights on the Miranda portion of the sign. This type of lighting is allowed um, on Broadway, the street, but not the rest of the district if approved by the commission as a modification. And if each flash does not last less than um, three, does not last more than three seconds. The timing of the chasing lights um, was not provided. This type of flashing light has been approved in the past and could be appropriate if the sign did not exceed the maximum allotment and if the illumination meets the design guidelines. So in conclusion, staff recommends disapproval of the projecting sign as proposed, finding it does not meet section four of the design guidelines for the Broadway Historic Preservation Zoning Overlay. Since the sign exceeds the allotment for the building and more information is needed to evaluate the illumination, chasing elements and materials. Uh, in addition, staff would not recommend approval of additional projects prior to the violation, the current violations being corrected. 
Any questions? Any questions for me? Okay. Thank you. The applicant wish to speak? Uh, seeing no applicant, uh, open public hearing. Anyone wish to speak regarding this project? Close public hearing. Uh, commissioners? I think this one's um, pretty cut and dry. There's a formula for square footage, and this pretty greatly exceeds it. In addition to already current violations, I'd be uncomfortable giving a, a new um, permit. So with that, I, I agree with uh, everything staff has come up with, uh, and therefore regarding 308 Broadway, I move for disapproval of the project, um, noting all staff findings. We have a motion and a second from uh, Commissioner Johnson. Any other discussion? You know, I, I just would like the, uh, we see a lot of things coming up to, uh, on Broadway with, with regard to signage, and it just seems like that they, um, it, it appears that they kind of disregarded uh, working with staff on 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 this building, and um, and 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 I'm disappointed in that. And I just thought I'd register that that my um, disappointment with trying to um, trying to work with with staff. And so uh, I agree with what you said. We have a motion and a second. Uh, all in favor? Uh, all opposed? Motion carries. Uh, next project. Okay. Next up is 1404 and 1406 North 14th Street. This is an application for the construction of a DADU at 1404 North 14th Street and the identical DADU on the neighboring property at 1406 North 14th Street. Because the structure is identical and there is one owner, I'm just gonna present them together, but the, the commission will need to hold two separate votes. Uh, the proposed DADU meets the design guidelines for setbacks. With the addition of corner boards and staff approval of the final selections, it will also meet the guidelines for materials. The footprint is a little bit too large at 765 square feet and the limit is 750 square feet. The proposed DADUs will sit behind one-story historic houses, meaning that the maximum wall height allowed by the guidelines is 12 feet. Due to the grade, both houses do have, two, do have full two-story additions. The applicant is proposing 17-foot, 6-inch wall heights for the DADUs. The commission has long used the front of the original primary structure to determine the appropriate heights of the outbuildings, not later rear additions. Staff finds that the wall heights should be reduced to be no more than 12 feet tall. The design proposes two add-on features. The first is an awning over the garage door, which meets the guidelines. The second is a balcony. The balcony is about 55 square feet, while the guidelines limit balconies to 30 square feet. In conclusion, staff recommends approval of the proposed outbuildings with the following conditions. The building footprints shall be reduced to be a maximum of 750 square feet. The wall heights shall be no more than 12 feet from finished floor. Four inch corner boards shall be used at exposed corners. The balcony footprint shall be reduced to be a maximum of 30 square feet, and staff shall approve the final materials. Now, the applicant is here and wants to speak. Do you have questions for me first? No? Yes? So, uh, as an amateur <laughs> architect, or, yes. you know, I have no <laughs> knowledge of an architect, sure. so in order to approve the wall height of, you know, maximum of 12 uh, foot, mm -hmm. uh, you can approve the, by changing the roof pitch, correct? Um, you could. It, this, the wall height here is about 17 and a half feet. Mm -hmm. You would have to change that pitch a lot. Yes. <laughs> I don't know if you could keep that ridge height and still hit a 12 foot wall height. That, that is something you could do if, if it was just a small difference. I think just a change in roof pitch would fix that. But the, these walls are, this is a full two story um, outbuilding and it needs to be one and a half right. behind a one. So in so order to achieve a one and a half, you know, uh, reduce, well, rather increasing the roof pitch and then changing to uh, what they call the different design, basically. It would, it because would this is a true two-story design, but try to achieve one and a half story and with the historic content and 12 feet is 
completely achievable. Yeah, that is what we're asking for it to be designed right. as a one and a half story as opposed to a full two story. Yes. Okay. Yeah, that was my interpretation. And yes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, please state your name and address. Andy Rhodes, AGR Construction Management, 6232 Vosswood Drive, Nashville, 37205. Uh, first, I want to thank Jenny for all her hard work in helping us get through these. As she mentioned, um, our design shows 17 foot six wall height to the eave. And with the one and a half story restriction in the front of the home, um, that really squats the house uh, the uh, detached down a little bit in the back. So we are requesting that uh, we be allowed to do the 17 feet on the walls of the eave. That our overall height is 21.6, even with the proposed 17 feet walls. So we're well below the allowed 25 feet maximum. Um, with the slope of the grade, the whole lot slopes from front to back. So we have almost eight feet of slope difference from the front porch to where our um, finished floor would be in the back. We also would like to ask that the, <coughs> the 55 square feet on the balcony would be approved. If you look at the plan, back to the floor plan, please. Is it on there, Jenny? Okay. The way the, the way the balcony is laid out, um, we've got a nice double door for additional light to come in, and we'd like to be able to keep that um, right off of the living room. So we ask that we be allowed to do the 55 square feet instead of the 30 approved. Okay. Thank you. For, any questions for the applicant? Thank you. Open public hearing. Anyone wish to speak regarding this project? Close public hearing, uh, commissioners. So I, I agree with all of the staff's comments on the footprint of the building, the eave height, and the size of the balcony. Um, I guess the thing that I, I, I don't see this as a approval with conditions. I feel like if the eave height is lowered five and a half feet, I think it becomes a redesign because that's going to start interfering with the windows. Do certain windows become gables? Um, so I agree with the staff, except except for I feel like it needs to. It's going to be a design that needs to be resubmitted. Good. Yeah, I agree with Commissioner Fitz. Um, you know, I think we find that applicants are constantly pushing the envelope for how much space, how big, how big can my sign be, how many stories can I get, and uh, it's important. I think our role as a commission not to let that get out of control, just to, from a citywide perspective. Um, so again, you know, if you have a one-story or one and a story, half-story house, we, we don't typically approve two-story dadus for, for those properties. And this is the same thing that we've seen other times before. So yeah, I, I uh, agree with the staff recommendation. Another discussion or a motion? So since we have to uh, make two different motions, uh, I will make a motion to uh, accept staff recommendation in regards to 1404 uh, North 14th Street with all the conditions. Okay. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Second from Commissioner Price. Any other discussion? All in favor? Uh, all opposed? Okay. okay. Oh. Well, the next one's exactly the same, so you can comment on this. <laughs> so I make motion to uh, accept staff recommendation uh, on regards to 1406 North 14th Street with all the conditions. Can you add to that that, that it, the design has to be, I mean, would the, I guess that would be typical. The de design would still have to be resubmitted to you for approval. That would be typical. They'd have to resubmit it, um, but you're also welcome just to recommend disapproval. I, I get your point on that. Yeah. Okay. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Second from Commissioner Mayhall. 
Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? The motion carries. Thank you. Next project. Basketball Street. Uh, we're reviewing an application to demolish a non-contributing house and construct a new two-story house. A demolition of the non-contributing house meets the design guidelines. Um, as I said, the new building will be two stories tall. Uh, it will have a side gabled form. Uh, the proposed building will be 26 feet 6 inches tall from ridge to the average grade at the front. Surrounding houses Historic houses are typically one story, ranging from 16 to 22 feet tall. Staff finds the height and number of stories of the proposed infill is not compatible with surrounding historic houses and is inappropriate. Uh, the width of the building's primary mass at the front will be 30 feet 6 inches wide. Uh, and that width is the second story. The first story condition area is actually 2 feet narrower. Uh, the, for, the first story does include a wraparound porch that wraps from the front around the left side, and the width including the porch is 33 feet uh, 4 inches, 33-4. Uh, historic houses on the block typically range between 26 and 33 feet wide. Uh, this would be just, just over, just wider than that. Um, and staff finds that the width uh, being greater than is typical of historic houses and the condition of the upper story being wider than the first story is not appropriate as that's not seen on historic forms. Uh, here again, still on the front elevation, the window proportions of the building are atypical uh, in comparison to that of the surrounding context. The proposed infill has no windows on the front lower level, uh, just the door and side light. Uh, the upper story window sizes and proportions are highly irregular. S uh, not that symmetry is necessary for, for inf infill in, in all cases, um, but historic houses in the surrounding area typically have a regular with rhythm of windows, uh, evenly spaced, uh, no large sections of wall without a window opening. Openings are typically vertically oriented, uh, which these are, uh, but uh, lower level windows, lower levels typically have windows that are uh, larger than those of upper stories. Um, so, and, and that's uh, an area that staff felt that this uh, front facade was lacking. Uh, the side elevations, uh, oh, well, I'll go ahead and show the floor plan. Uh, just shows that the upper story uh, which is only about 20 feet deep on the upper story, but the upper story is wider than the first story. Uh, to the side elevations, uh, you see that the windows, again, are vertically oriented, um, but irregular spaces and larger on the upper story than they are on the first story. Uh, and there's the rear. Uh, looking at the context, the majority, as I said, of the historic context, those first two rows are... are uh, single-story houses. Uh, lower left there are three uh, infill houses. They're on the 1100 block, but this block goes 11, 12, 1300 uh, without a break in between. So essentially it's one, one long block. Uh, in the 1100s, those three infill houses were constructed, uh, approved by the commission in 2014, 15, and 16. And lower level right there is a two-and-a-half-story house that's down in the uh, across the other side of the block and, and, and down the street. Uh, again, certainly the adjacent houses and the majority of historic houses are, are single story. Uh, site plan, uh, I don't have much to say about these, but uh, I know the applicant wants to, to reference these later. And there's a um, streetscape provided by the applicant. Um, the, uh, well, the setback, general orientation of the property, and the known materials are all appropriate. Um, additional information would be needed on things like the window and door selections uh, if this were to be approved. Um, staff recommends approval of the application to demolish the non-contributing house, finding that it 
meets section 3B, 2B of the design guidelines. Uh, staff recommends disapproval of the proposed two-story house at 1201 Boscoville Street, finding that it does not meet sections 5A1, 5B1, and 5D of the design guidelines for the Lachlan Springs overlay. Uh, and you have gotten public comment, uh, which has been sent to you in the shared folder, uh, and the applicant is here to speak as well. And I'm happy, I'm also happy if you have any questions. The 2015-2016 uh, duplexes down the street, mm -hmm. how do we account for those approvals? Was that just a different time in the commission? And uh, uh, That's essentially it. Uh, they were, um, like I said, 2014, 15, and 16. So more than five years ago, um, you know, there was a time when on a block like parts of Boscoville, not so much this one, but areas where the historic context might seem not seem as strong. Like across 14th. Yeah. yeah. And we would look to, you know, there's a historic house, two-story house in the neighborhood mm -hmm. or within two blocks or something like yeah. that. We've gotten much more focused in where, how far uh, our perimeter is for right. for considering what's that is context. kind of what I was thinking I just wanted to confirm thank you Sean mm -hmm. thank you would the applicant like to speak Sorry, I was expecting somebody to ask me to say my name but <laughs> uh, good afternoon my name is Lonnie Fowler uh, my wife and I have been the owner residence of 1201 Boscobel Street since 2005, raising our two young boys. We were wishing to build a new single family home, not to maximize square footage for profit, but for us to continue to raise our family in the neighborhood that we love. We want to speak briefly before we yield the rest of our time to our architect, Craig Kennedy, but we'll offer a short background. Craig spoke with historic staff in June to ask for parameters regarding one and a half versus two stories for our project. Staff told him then that two stories would be appropriate. After spending significant time on design and thousands of dollars of our money, historic staff has changed their position. I stand before you today to merely ask why. Why is the direction given to an applicant by a senior level staff member being changed or overruled regarding appropriateness of massing, especially considering the good faith effort in seeking guidance for this project? And secondly, why would historic staff recommend approval for significantly larger two and two and a half story infill dwellings on our block on three separate occasions in our neighborhood's very recent history, but claim that two stories is not appropriate for our family's project. We are not seeking any special exceptions or favors. We're just asking for fairness. We are asking that you approve what historic staff has already acknowledged, both in June and in other infill projects that they have recommended approval of just a few doors away. The two story is appropriate. And here's Craig Kennedy. Have a, just a, since we're talking about massing, just a sort of diagram here for, for folks uh, if they want. Um, good afternoon. Uh, I'm Craig Kennedy, uh, 3700 Brush Hill Road, uh, the architect uh, for the job. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, really, I guess the root of, of why we're here is in, is in June. We did receive direction uh, to, for two story massing being appropriate. Um, and then sort of subsequent to that, uh, through the sort of collective review, that has, has changed. Um, so in June, we reached out to Sean and, and had a conversation like we do many times. I actually got three back recently uh, on inquiries, sort of preliminary inquiries. Um, the purpose of that call was to, to clarify one and a half story versus two story. We, we, know, we know the the, the stipulation of it, you know, we, we know the requirement of, of what it takes to do two stories. Um, we looked at Google Street View, uh, we looked at the block face. When we talk about the 1100 block, the 1100 block is two houses away. Like these infill projects are not 10 houses away. They're, they're two down from, from this house. Uh, we looked at the, the historic house down the road, uh, 12, uh, 1214, which is six properties away. Um, the conversation, uh, you know, these are done very early at what we'd call like Part T diagram. You know, this isn't an approval. It's a, can we establish a parameter? Are we designing a two-story house or are we designing a one-and-a-half-story house? Um, the call wrapped up with indication that the context would, would uh, warrant a two-story or could warrant a two-story uh, being appropriate. 
Um, so we, uh, in September, submitted uh, our preliminary uh, plans and elevations and some 3D uh, and received an email back, um, as we, we always do. Um, and it says, uh, I'll sort of paraphrase, but because I don't have a lot of time, but you know, Robin was out of town um, on vacation and that it was looked at with the staff that the height at 25 feet was well within range. And this is of two stories. This is the, what we're looking at today, uh, essentially. Um, uh, but they're not certain about the two-story form. So that was kind of the first time we've, we've been sort of, uh, that was the sort of shift. Um, we, we have, it says, we have approved two-story infill on, uh, in 2014 through 16, uh, but there's only one historic uh, house on the block. Um, it's not a no or yes to two-story, but it's something we would need to study more, uh, maybe answer when Robin is back. And then a one and a half story would certainly be a clear yes. Um, you know, for us, this was kind of pretty jarring in terms of, of sort of shift in the project. Um, you know, we, we talked to Sean and decided just to go ahead um, and submit, you know, for an official, uh, submit the official uh, preservation permit uh, drawings, which you have, uh, hoping to sort of hear from Robin. But, but I understand when you get back in town now things are when you're you're uh, sort of getting caught up uh, we have not had a meeting with Robin but but we assume from the staff report that's reflective of, of her uh, guidance opinion um, so had we originally been told one and a half story house was the house that's what we would have designed they, they wouldn't have spent money asking us to chase something that frankly is uphill uh, fight um, you know the uh, the, a, designing a one and a half story house, you can't just lower this roof. It's a different house. Like the stair has to move. Everything is different. Uh, so it's not as simple as just, well, make it one and a half stories. Uh, in addition, there's some other comments on the staff stuff, uh, overhang and uh, windows and things. We can work that out with staff. Really, the, the point in this project is two stories. We, you know, that's, that was our initial uh, start out, and, and we'd, we'd like to continue uh, that direction. Uh, so the home is situated, um, you can kind of see in that, that aerial diagram, uh, with three new construction on the left-hand side, two houses in between. Um, those houses were approved in 2014, 15, and 16. Um, you know, as far as continuity goes, I mean, uh, I went back to look, and the, you know, two current commissioners were on the commission in 13, four current commissioners and four staff, including like probably the, the four highest ranking staff, uh, were, were all in staff and commission in 2016 when the last house was approved. So we're not talking, you know, 25 years ago. We're talking five years ago with many of the same faces and voices in the room. Um, you know, we, we, we also recognize the uh, historic context. Um, you know, as, as we read the reports for, say, 1107, two down, uh, you know, it's... Uh, its approval for appropriateness of, of two-story cites the other two stories next to it, the, the ones right next to it. We're, we're not given that same leeway. We're just asking for the same kind of lens to, to, to look through these things. Um, the, the, uh, the historic house on uh, 1214 is, is, is sort of reflected as being kind of too far away, whereas if you look at all the other reports for 1105, 7, and 9, it's mentioned as its context. So we would just like it for it to be our context. Um, uh, so uh, regarding VA1, which is the, the section on massing, uh, I know the guidelines don't, don't dictate volume, but we've, you know, Revit, our 3D program gives us volume quite easily. Uh, you can see in there, I mean, you know, our, our volume compared to the three prior approvals is nearly half of what those were, and, and very much in line with the one and one and a half story houses. I mean, we've been very intentional to make this as small and as efficient as house as possible. I mean, none of this is, is sort of pushing uh, envelope as that goes. Um, you know, regarding foundation, we'll have one or two courses a block above grade and then wood on top of that. I don't, I don't think foundation height is, is really uh, an issue. Our ridge from finished floor to ridge is 24 to 26 six or whatever if you add the the, the floor finish and then block um, eve is 18 feet that's two feet shorter than approved neighboring infill um, our width is 28 and a half to 30 and a half 33 overall the neighboring properties you know again reading reports from other recent approvals 1107 cites widths of neighboring properties up to 40 feet wide we're, we're, we're 33 feet wide i mean that's a pretty reasonable uh, pretty typical, really reasonable width, including a side porch. Um, 
our gable is a 612 side gable. Um, similarly, if you look at that 3D to 1105, the far left-hand roof, it's a, that's a side gabled house. We're showing a side gabled house 612 pitch. Um, in fact, we prefer the pitch to be 812. That would match a dadu that was built a couple years ago in the back, but six makes the house shorter, so we're sort of willing to, to kind of bend on that. Um, uh, regarding windows, the V.D section, uh, we, we do have some larger windows in the front. Um, they're, they're really highlighting a programmatic element in the front, which is a stair. Um, you know, architects, I guess, have been using that, you know, strategy to highlight certain programmatic elements historically over time. Um, the rest of the windows are two over one. I mean, we're, we're willing to work with staff to, to massage out and make those things work. But, you know, in closing, um, you know, we, we sort of felt like the, the report was a little bit sort of unfairly written relative to some of the other ones that are sort of written around it. We weren't really given any of the, the qualifiers that, that, that some of these other ones got. I mean, considering it's a 24 foot tall two story house, um, uh, you know, and I, I guess I say that because we, we did work extremely hard, really in good faith of that June phone call to not produce a 30 or whatever it is, foot tall, two and a half story infill house like, like these neighboring houses are. Um, you know, so we're, we're just asking today um, motion to allow two story massing at the property in the same way it was determined in June, as well as in the prior approvals that are right next door to this house, um, and to allow us leeway and opportunity to work with staff to remedy windows or an overhanging level. The overhanging level, we can pull that back. That's no problem. Thank you. Any questions for the applicant? Open public hearing. Anyone wish to speak regarding this project? Close public hearing. Uh, commissioners, discussion? I guess I'd, I do want to, I'd like to hear from staff just about direction that was given and, and kind of how we, how ended up here sure I'll, I'll start out and Sean can give some more direction on um, details but and, and I think you all know this but it is a great opportunity to talk about this again because I think there's always this kind of misunderstanding that staff's role is to provide guidance to the applicant and to you and that there's no guarantee that anything we say is going to be what you decide right so it is just that and as you well know things have changed a lot over, I know over my 10 years and certainly over the last five years. So our advice is based on you and the decisions you make. So if you make a decision uh, to go a certain way that's different than you have in the past and you don't give a, any information about, well, it's unique to the site, then that's the advice we start to give people. And as Mr. Alexander explained, how we look at context has changed a good bit. We used to just go and pick, and if there was a two-story anywhere in the neighborhood, then we said a two-story was appropriate. But we've heard a lot from neighborhoods that they don't appreciate that, and that's not protecting the historic character of their neighborhoods. So that has evolved and changed over time. Um, Sean, did you have anything you wanted to add? Um, well, the, the applicants, as they said, did you know come to us, to me, uh, asking questions in good faith. Uh, and I feel like the implication there, and actually it makes what's explicitly said by a supporter of in one of the letters in support is that we acted in bad faith. And I assure you that's not the case. There was no intentionally misleading of the applicant. Uh, it's just an imperfect process where they come to us asking for uh, guidance on an infill project uh, and the information our ability, to, our ability to respond is driven in large part by the amount of information we, we have. Uh, a lot of times people will essentially ask for approval based on a site plan, and that's just not possible to do. Uh, and it's certainly, you know, a, a general idea and a direction can be, uh, can be suggested based on a phone call, but not until you actually see drawings uh, you know, even if it's just a preliminary sketch or something, the, the, the more information we have from the applicant, the more concrete and firm our responses can be. Uh, and it's just a conversation, a dialogue that we have with applicants all the time, 
where uh, we're trying to get here to the meeting where we're in support of what they're proposing. And sometimes we start pretty far apart and get here together at the right time at the right place. And sometimes, uh, sometimes there's still a little bit of a gap. Um, that is a, uh, yeah, I, I think um, Ms. Ziegler and Mr. Alexander explained it, um, you know, although I'm sure there, you know, there are overlap of both staff and commissioners, it is um, up to us as commissioners, you know, to make decisions based on each case um, so that, again, it is an imperfect process. So um, I appreciate those comments, uh, Sean, and from the applicant as well, just for our knowledge and um, regarding this case, I mean, you know, I, I, I guess I'm going back and forth. I think the, you know, the size of it to me is, you know, I understand being next to the two houses and how we have constricted our kind of look at, you know, how close we look for the um, surrounding context. But, um, you know, I think it's an interesting design and the massing to me is just isn't, I don't know, egregiously large when looking at the other houses. Um, you know, it's still only 24 feet tall, and I think it's just kind of a modest two-story home, but, you know, I realize that the ones next to it are one story, so I'm, I'm kind of going back and forth on that. But I generally want to say I kind of like uh, this design, but with, you know, thinking about the proportions and windows and things like that that are historically appropriate. So that's, I guess, to see what other commissioners think. I was just going to say, in in, I guess looking looking at the context for me. You know, lots of times we look at a block. Um, you know, the houses that are adjacent, the houses within that block. This is uh, while well, while there's different. <laughs> I guess while there's different different numbers on the address, this is an unbroken block. Like the 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 numbers change, but the there's not a there's not an intersecting street that that makes you feel one block is separated from the other. So the the three two story houses, you know, to me are are while they have an 1100 address, that to me they are within the same block, and they're only two doors down. And so contextually. I feel like it is a modest two-story, and I don't feel like it's that much of a departure from some of the buildings already there, and that, um, yeah, I, I guess, I, I'm, and with it being a, a new infill project to me, um, I guess I, I'm, I'm compelled by the, by the applicant's, you know, argument. I tend to agree with you all. Uh, I think one thing that maybe Commissioner uh, uh, Jones was getting at is that the overall two story uh, two stories is sort of mitigated by the fact that most of the house is actually one or maybe one and a half story like the rear of it um, just to the applicants I, I understand the frustration but as Sean said this is a, it's an imperfect process we take every case individually and things do change over time so five years ago six years ago this commission was uh, deciding things differently and, and based on neighborhood feedback has adjusted. So it, uh, please don't think anybody's trying to be arbitrary or, or um, uh, malicious, uh, as, as Sean said. It's just the city is changing so quickly that uh, in, in a lot changes in five years, and the way we do our work has changed too. But know that we're, we're look, we look at your stuff seriously and, and read all the public comment and I drove by today. Um, so I do think it makes a difference to me in my mind that there is a historic four square just down the block, uh, two story house. I think that this is relatively modest for its um, two story design. I don't think it's likely um, for another similar situation to come up here because I, I'm pretty sure the other houses around it are all contributing and that they would never be allowed to be demolished. Anyway, um, and then, I don't know, just f from a whole, more holistic perspective, when I was driving down, the grade across the street on the other side of the street is considerably taller. And so this house really isn't going to stick out in any kind of way because they're already looking down over everything. 
So I don't know. There's a lot of mitigating factors here that tend I, I tend to uh, align with what the applicant is asking for. So. Well, I do appreciate the comment uh, from you know uh, Commissioner Price because I really don't know. Is specifically, you know, this uh, parcel, but I was, you know, looking at that Bosque Bell I just drove around uh, a couple of days ago, uh, happened to be Titans game, so I got, you know, money to stuck in the traffic. <laughs> but anyway, so I was driving around, and then, you know, that area has changed uh, dramatically, and, you know, the new construction going on, and, you know, uh, addition is going on, so, but, I mean, in theory, I am, um, when I, just looking at the uh, blueprint, I was uh, kind of leaning towards a staff recommendation because just looking at the site, you know, the, all these uh, duplex are uh, newly built in 2014 and 2015 in that time range. And now we are 2021. So I, again, always say sometimes people kind of react when they see like a massive house, tall and skinny duplex coming to your neighborhood because they don't want to see those kind of, you know, designs. So therefore they are more embraced with historic and neighborhood conservation mode. So I was, you know, contemplating if this, uh, the new, you know, are we allowing that kind of a trend by allowing a pure two-story? And looking at the site, a kind of long uh, site, so even though the front will be, you know, one story, because of the interesting topography, you know, you can, you can move the two-story portion to the midsection you know, in theory. <laughs> so therefore, it's like, yeah, it makes sense to have one story appearance in the front portion and then put the uh, second story uh, in the middle. But I do understand, you know, applicant's point. To do that on the paper, it's easy just kind of move. But in reality, you have to move the staircase and bedroom arrangement and, you know, whole nine yard. So I do understand their point of view. So for that sense, I, I think, you know, we have to take a look at each parcel by parcel. But I just want to caution us, just because we did have newer uh, duplex and just because we approved and we cannot, you know, based on the historic context and massing and a scale based on the newer design. I think, you know, if we were to truly uh, go with a history conservation and guideline, we really have to be uh, conscientious of size and massing and, you know, appropriate street. So for that reason, I was really compelled to uh, staff recommendation because there was a room to move the second story portion to the middle. But I do appreciate, you know, other commissioners' comment based on this specific street and this, uh, you know, specific context. So I'm open to go either way. I, you know, just want to caution for the uh, pr property by property, street by street. Other comments or a motion? Do you have any thoughts? Uh, yeah, um, Commissioner Price asked if I had any thoughts. I, one of the things that I, I'm really uh, seeing with this project is that, I mean, I, I do truly have no doubt whatsoever in my mind that both the applicant, the architect, and the staff are all working in good faith uh, to try to uh, bring forth a project that would be one that would be appropriate for this neighborhood and for this setting. I appreciate the staff recommendation, and I also appreciate the work that the architect did to give us some more tools that we could use to evaluate the situation and your presentation as well. So those th those are my comments. And I, I don't disagree with the other comments at all of the, uh, of the, of the other commissioners. So. so with that said, are there more comments or a motion? Don't be bashful now. <laughs> I'm 
trying to, I mean, for how I'm feeling about it, I'm trying to craft a motion to um, approve the project, essentially, but I'm trying to look at the other pieces in the report for, you know, window, you know, those type of things um, to see what staff's analysis on that was. That's what I'm looking through now if anyone um, else wants to, to try it. Well, it, it does sound like the applicant is willing to work with staff on window placement and sizing, so I, I think that's um, encouraging. Uh, I, I personally like the contemporary design, and I think that we need, um, I would like to see more of that instead of replica houses. Uh, so, um, you know, allowing, allowing the applicant to, to work with a more contemporary eye, but to make it work in, in, I know you guys have done that with other houses before, and you know how, know how to speak the language and talk to each other, so that's... I think that that could be resolved. Um, if there are no other comments or discussion, I would move. I would move for approval of the applicant's design with the conditions that uh, they work with staff on approving win the window and other sort of um, uh, construction details, as noted in the staff report. Um, and I'm going to. I'm going to say that I, I normally stick. Pretty, hew pretty closely to staff recommendations for for site for for stories and, and massing of, of homes, but I feel like with the historic home just down the block, we have the press. We have a historic, even though it's just one house. Uh, in this situation, it works for me. So that that's my motion. It's a little long, I know, but uh, uh, Ms. Ziegler, do we need this? Has the uh, two recommendations from staff within this? Do we need? To have two separate motions, one for no, demolition. No, they could be done together. So, so um, Commissioner Price, I, would you like to include demolition of the existing structure? Yes. Uh, please include in my motion to recommend uh, demolition of the non-contributing existing home. Okay. Good. I second. Okay. And second from Dr. Williams. Any other comments? I, I do have one, and it doesn't necessarily have to be part of the motion, and it doesn't necessarily have to come from you, from anyone. If you could give us any kind of direction on what you want to see with, in terms of the windows and the construction details, that would be appreciated since we're already in a situation where... Mm -hmm. there, yeah. Sure. Uh, I think there, there's some general guidelines, like no more than six feet of wall space without a window. Is that correct? Um, I don't know that this... Des I didn't look close enough. To, I don't know if this design doesn't follow that, but... Um, there are other contemporary homes in Lachlan Springs that have been approved. I don't know how those negotiations went, but um, I don't think that not being so much I don't know how was the concern, but that they they're smaller windows and bigger window you're more familiar with it. Um yeah, I, I mean, it was the, the lack of windows on the, it, it, essentially it's three bays on the top and, can you go to the front, three bays on the top, um, you know, two irregular, two small and then one large and then uh, just, it, it almost reads like the, a different number of bays on the first floor than the second. Um, <laughs> uh, I don't know. Uh, I don't recall exactly what that that section uh, said. I, you know, typically what we what we see in historic houses, and obviously it doesn't have to exactly match a historic houses. Uh, no wall space of greater than I think it's actually ten feet without a uh, a window or door opening. Um, comparable comparable proportions between first and and upper stories, um, and then windows to be vertically oriented. Uh, which again, these are uh, the preliminary plan showed much more sort of a horizontal orientation of the windows. So it's already progressed from from what we first saw toward to this. Um, I'm confident that, like the applicant said, the, those sort of details can be massaged uh, to I think where we would all feel comfortable. If I may, can we hear from the applicant? Did you read, did you have a comment that you might? Is that Sure. Is that yeah. cool with everybody? Come on, uh, Well, it's mostly probably just sort of clarification of, I mean, I'd have to look at how much runway we have sort of to, to pull the stair, right? If we, if we pull the top landing of the stair, it shortens the bottom 
that lowers the, I mean, the, the windows are up high because there's a landing on the stair and we were, I mean, we could pull the windows down lower to the landing. It just, handrails and other things become maybe a little a little more challenging. But we can do that. Um, if, if the issue is just too much expression on that corner or, or, or just the wrong expression, you know, it's like, I mean, I, I think our intent is, sorry, I think our intent is an expression of the stair because the stair is sort of a, an architectural piece. Um, uh, so maybe it's defining whether that can be an expression. And then we can work with staff of what that ultimately is. I mean, because I do think we might be able to, like I said, pull that string a little bit on, on the stair, lower the landing or raise the landing, flip it, you know, somehow get windows lower if that's the issue. You know, if we need more lower, you know, window closer to the ground, I guess. Um, yeah, okay. that's what I would say, yeah. Sean, does that give you ideas about how y'all can work together on this? Does that, do you, would you like more direction from us? Yes. <laughs> so, so just in looking at this, you know, and I, I don't like second guessing architects, but it looks to me like those upper two windows could be a little bit larger uh, to scale them up a little bit more. And, uh, and, uh, and I do think that, that possibly, I, I like the way that the top of those larger windows align with the smaller windows. So I feel pretty good about that. Whether the whether the windows on the right hand side get a little bit taller, I think is, is something that the architect and Sean can work through. But uh, to me, uh, that would that would make a big difference to me and the way that feels. I agree. Could we see the side elevations too? Before before we move on, I did have one question for you. One thing that we have done for the last at least ten years that I'm aware of is that historically the windows on the first level were bigger than the second level or they were all the same size. Not saying they all have to be the same size or anything like that. But that was our concern with the larger window is that it's it creates sort of a top heavy look that you don't see historically. Again, not that it needs to match mm -hmm. an exact historic building. Just would love your thoughts on that. Ideas, maybe it's okay here. Why is it okay here and not another? So again, we also give good feedback the next time. And I do think there is a difference in a contemporary design versus more one that's that's trying to approximate a traditional look to it. So that, so there is some difference in there. I, I would think that one of the things you might look at is seeing if if you go to one window in the stair instead of two, that might that might help to take away some of that top heaviness that, uh, that Ms. Ziegler was talking about. Okay. Do you want to look at the other elevations? Any other thoughts, Commissioner Price? I, th I think your idea of, the, of those upper story on the facade, making them larger, uh, and then it seems like on the east elevation, there's also a lot of room there, right near the rear, that there's maybe another window or, or slightly larger windows could make, the, make it look. But again, I, I'm not an architect. Uh, I would like to hear from you or, or Commissioner Fitz, you, mm -hmm. you know, um, on that. But. It is a different kind of house than a neo bungalow that we see a lot of. All right. Commissioner Fitz, any comments? I guess if we're taking that same approach on the on the side, I think again you've got top heaviness on that. Maybe on the east elevation, you've got the larger window upstairs and the smaller windows below. So if there's a way to to um, well, really, I guess you've got it on both elevations, but if there's a way to, to maybe equalize those a little bit more, I'm making sense in that mm -hmm. gabled portion. Because I agreed with the comments on the front that the smaller windows could stand to be a little bit larger and, um, you know, it doesn't all have to be in balance, but maybe a little more proportionally balanced. Okay. Good. Okay. I think we have a motion and a second. Is that correct? And, so, and uh, any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. All opposed? 
Motion carries. Okay. Thank you so much. Thanks to everyone. All right. Next item is 1015 Halcyon Avenue. This is an application to construct infill in an outbuilding. The site is currently a vacant lot. Last month, the commission disapproved a plan for the site, but the applicant has continued to work with staff on a revised plan, which staff finds to um, be appropriate for the historic context and meet the design guidelines. So the lot is situated between two non-contributing houses that were constructed prior to the adoption of the Waverly Belmont. Neighborhood Conservation Overlay District. Um, the historic context on this block is, sorry, skipped ahead. It's primarily one and a half stories. The proposed infill is one and a half stories with height and width that are appropriate for the historic context. Uh, the side elevations read as one and a half stories as well um, with dormers that are inset from the walls below. And here we have the rear facade. Uh, the proposed infill meets all base zoning setbacks, um, as does the, the proposed outbuilding, uh, which also meets all of the design criteria and the design guidelines. So in conclusion, staff recommends approval with conditions that are set forth in the staff recommendation. Um, here, if you have any questions for me, and the applicant is here as well. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. The applicant. My name is Van Pond. I'm the architect for the project, 2929 Sidco Drive, Nashville, Tennessee, 37204. I don't have any comments at this time, and I'm here to answer your questions. Oh, great. Thank you. Good. Uh, open public hearing. Anyone else wishing to speak on regarding this project? Close public hearing. Commissioners, uh, discussion or a motion? Just want to thank uh, the applicant uh, working with uh, planning staff. I know it is sometimes difficult to kind of arrange even you know foot or two, but really appreciate working on uh, with the staff. And I personally like new design better than original one, so I'm really happy to see it. And if nobody else have any comment, uh, I would like to make motion to approve. Uh, 1015 Halcyon uh, with a staff recommendation uh, with all the conditions. Do we have a motion? Do we have a second? Second. Second from Commissioner Jones. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? All right. Motion carries. Oh, sorry. I went all the way through it. Um, the next item um, is for um, 2411 Fairfax Avenue. It's an application to demolish a non-contributing house and to construct infill. The structure at 2411 Fairfax Avenue is a one-story brick house that was constructed circa 1950. Given the later date of construction as well as the style, form, and detailing of the house, staff finds that the house does not contribute to the historic character uh, of the Hillsborough Weston Neighborhood Conservation Zoning Overlay and that its demolition meets the design guidelines. The proposed infill is oriented to Fairfax Avenue um, with a front setback that's consistent with the historic houses on either side. Um, the infill is one and a half stories with overall height and width that are appropriate for the historic context of this block of Fairfax Avenue. Uh, the side facades um, read as one and a half stories and the depth of the infill is appropriate for the context. So there's another side and the proposed rear. Uh, the context on this block uh, is predominantly one and a half stories. Um, here you see 2413 and 2409 Fairfax Avenue, which are both contributing. Across the street you have Eakin Elementary School, and then the photo on the bottom is 2405 Fairfax Avenue, which is also contributing. Uh, so in conclusion, staff recommends approval with the conditions set forth in the staff recommendation. Um, the applicant couldn't make it, but I spoke with him this morning, and he is in agreement with all of the, the recommended conditions. All right. Any questions for me? Okay. Thank you. Uh, open public hearing. Does anyone wish to speak regarding this project? Close public hearing. Uh, commissioners, uh, discussion or uh, motion? 
I'll make a motion unless there's other discussion. But with regards to 2411 Fairfax Avenue, I move for approval with all staff recommendations. Second. Second from Commissioner Jones. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Uh, all opposed? Thank you. Good. 1805 Lakehurst. Is that the um, okay. 1805 Lakehurst was constructed in 1945 out of a uh, concrete block. The house was built at the back of the lot with a deep front yard and no rear yard. In May 2021, uh, the Historic Commission approved rear and side additions to the house. The applicant proposes an outbuilding that is set to the left side of the house since there is no way to put the garage behind the historic house. The garage meets all base zoning setbacks. The outbuilding has a footprint of 480 square feet. Because the lot is over 10,000 square feet, in theory, the outbuilding can have a footprint of up to 1,000 square feet. However, the constraints of the lot limit the structure's footprint. Um, here are the elevations. The overall ridge and eave heights are lower than those on the historic house and meet the design guidelines. The materials will be similar to the materials of the historic house, which staff finds meet the design guidelines. The applicant proposes one roof dormer that is inset two feet from the wall below and one wall dormer that is not inset two feet from the wall below. The wall dormer faces the rear and the inset dormer faces Lakehurst Avenue. Both dormers are wider than the 14 feet maximum width allowed under the design guidelines. They are both 18 feet, eight inches, um, or four feet, eight inches wider than the original design guidelines allow. Staff finds that the proposed width of the rear dormer to be appropriate in this instance because the proposed outbuilding is otherwise significantly smaller than what would typically be allowed under the design guidelines and because the dormer will not be highly visible from the street. The outbuilding's footprint is less than one half of what would be allowed under the design guidelines. The, the footprint of the outbuilding is constrained by the constraints of the lot. In addition, the outbuilding is also three feet shorter than what it could be under the design guidelines. Since the rear dormer is not highly visible from the street and the outbuilding is smaller than allowed under the design guidelines, staff finds the rear dormer width to be appropriate. On the front dormer, however, the wider front dormer is highly visible from the street because the outbuilding is located to the side of the historic house rather than behind it. Staff finds that because of its high visibility and because the outbuilding lines up with the historic home, the front dormer should not exceed the maximum and so be reduced to 14 feet. That is to reduce the, the dormer by four feet, eight inches. Uh, this is a rendering of the outbuilding. And staff recommends approval of the outbuilding with the following conditions. One, the front dormer be reduced in width to 14 feet. And two, staff approve all windows and doors and roof shingle color prior to purchase and installation. Uh, with these conditions, staff finds that the project meets sections four and seven of part one of the Lachlan Springs East End chapter of part two of the, consolidate, of the consolidated guidelines for the turn of the century neighborhood conservation zoning overlays. And uh, the applicant is here and I think he has some materials to pass out and is gonna speak. Any questions for staff? If you'll state your name and address, please. Yes, my name is uh, Matthew Schutz, and I live at 5025 Hillsborough Road. And I'm sorry if you thought you would have a day where you didn't get to discuss a dormer. <laughs> um, I'm so excited to be here today uh, on behalf of Dave and Hannah, um, the clients. And I, I appreciate the time Melissa, uh, B, and Josh have spent with leading us through the process. And I'll do my best to briefly explain why we think this, the accessory structure meets the intent of the guidelines as presented and why approving it as presented does not endanger the significance of the historic house or set an unwanted precedent. Um, so you probably remember originally we wanted to sneak kind of a garage bonus room at the basement level of the house, but because of site hydrology, we decided to ultimately focus on a small accessory structure. Um, and even the size of the lot would permit a larger uh, 1,000 foot accessory structure in theory, it's been our primary goal to try and reduce that footprint and height as much as possible because the house is small and um, 
for those of you who know Little Hollywood, you know how uh, much of a jewel it is. We want to do everything possible to preserve that little part of the neighborhood. Um, the footprint of the accessory structure is only 478 square feet, and it's just 18 feet tall. Um, we try to take that front gable element of the existing house, which is about that size, and, and replicate it to give a nod to the house in terms of style and scale. Um, uh, and with regard to the dormer, we were trying to give enough space, like enough wall on either side of that dormer, that front facing dormer, so that the windows stayed consistent with some of that historic window pattern. Um, in essence, having a window area and then a little bit of meat, <laughs> if you will, on either side. Um, and when we modeled a narrower dormer, the proportions seemed a little bit off. The dormer felt a little bit too small, if, if that makes any sense, because we made this small little building so efficient. When we, when we made the dormer smaller, it seemed a little bit off, for lack of a better term. Um, and I could certainly understand the staff's perspective, um, but because of the unique nature of the slot, I truly do not see the setting an unwanted precedent. Um, I don't think staff will be inundated with requests for accessory structures of this type or wider dormers. Um, if for no other reason, then this garage, I think, is way too small for <laughs> most homeowners and developers. Um, and uh, I think by setting sort of a procedural precedent, which is what I think you've done, what um, Melissa's done in, in working with us, is to say, if you think there's a warranted exception, let's go through the drawings. Let's go through the process of making sure, you know, visually in drawings, that this is something that meets the guidelines. I think that's something that's going to keep you from, you know, potentially saying no over and over. And again, this this lot is so unique <laughs> and this part of the neighborhood is so unique. Um, I, I really don't see this as, as something that you'll, you'll see over and over. Um, thanks again for your consideration. I'm here to answer any questions. Any questions for the applicant? Okay, thank you. Open public hearing. Anyone wish to speak regarding this project? Closed public hearing. Commissioners, discussion? May I ask a question to the staff? Uh, uh, clearly, this is a unique situation, but is there in the past, have we allowed a uh, larger than 14-foot dormer up front in the vi vi uh, visible location in the past? I'm not aware of one. Um, the rear is, is highly visible, too, but we, we did think that was appropriate because of the uniqueness of the lot. Does staff recall one? Since we started specifying 14? Well, thank you. Uh, I don't know. Uh, to me, it's size, that's the guideline, and front visible, you know, 14 foot is the guideline. So I'm afraid of starting the precedent just because uniquely different location. And, but then again, that might be our purview, uh, but since this is a unique uh, location, but since uh, this, you know, our building is not typical uh, behind the you know, main house buildings, more visible from the street. So I think more reason to follow the guideline and you know, stay with, within the uh, specific size. And while rear will be okay to enlarge, you know, depart from that guideline. 
So I am uh, inclined to staff recommendation in this case. I really love this design. It's so lovely. I agree with Commissioner Johnson, I think. Um, you know, the staff is giving a break on the back, given, given the, the nature of the lot, but I, I tend to agree that we should stay with the with the letter of the regu uh, of the of the guidelines. I also want to say to Matt, I think this is a great, really cool project, and you've done a great job. It's uh, uh, it'll be a welcome addition down there in Little Hollywood. But um, yeah, I agree with you. Good. So, other discussion or a motion? Uh, 1805 Lake House Horse Avenue. Uh, I make motion to uh, accept staff recommendation. Okay. We have a motion. We have a second. Second. Uh, second from Commissioner Williams. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Thank you. 949 Maxwell. All right. All right, 949 Maxwell is a circa 1938 brick bungalow that contributes to the historic character of the Maxwell Heights uh, neighborhood conservation zoning overlay. The applicant proposes a wider addition and a rear dormer. Um, here's the site plan. The blue area shows the footprint of the addition. The wider portion is inset appropriately and meets the design guidelines because the house is less than 30 feet wide and is shifted on the lot. The addition will only add approximately 180 square feet of footprint to the historic house. Here's the right elevation with the new construction clouded. The wider addition is just, the one, is just one story in height and is significantly lower in height than the historic house. The rear dormer is inset appropriately on the right side. But on the left, on the left elevation, the rear dormer is not inset but is stacked on the wall below. There's an existing flat roof addition that is not inset, and the shed dormer will stack on that addition. Here's the rear addition showing the dormer's lack of an inset. While staff understands that the applicant is working with an existing condition that is not inset on the ground floor, staff recommends that the new dormer be inset a full two feet so as to keep the scale of the dormer appropriate to the historic house and to meet the design guidelines. In conclusion, staff recommends approval of the project uh, with the conditions outlined in the staff recommendation, including condition number one, that the rear dormer be inset two feet from the left sidewall of the house. Um, and also, prior to this meeting, you received letters from neighbors as well as a letter from the applicant's contractor. Um, those were um, included in the SharePoint um, before today. So, any questions for staff or, okay. Questions? No. Thank you. The applicant here. Please state your name and address. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Joe Falder, uh, property owner. This is my wife, Kristen Falder. Address 949 Maxwell Avenue, uh, Nashville, Tennessee, 37206. Um, we actually have uh, Do you want printed copies the of materials. What you have yeah, the, an email. The only thing that's in here that's not is of some pictures actually showing the structure. If you'd like to see that. Yeah, here we go. Thank you, guys. So unfortunately, uh, Brent Hunter, our architect, uh, had a death in the family, and he couldn't be here today. And Tony Hirsch, our general contractor, has a virus, and he could not be here today. But they submitted the letters for us, and we're going to read them out loud. Uh, I'm just going to give you our personal remarks uh, first and, and asks as to why we're uh, asking a reconsideration of the uh, two-foot inset of the dormer upstairs. Um, first of all, set some context. We've owned the house for eight years. Um, it's our family house. Uh, we had long discussions as to whether we were going to update it because we knew that buying it eight years ago Within 10 years, we're going to have to put significant money into the house, the bones, the plumbing, some of the electric. So there's a lot going on inside, which will be a whole other approval process after this. Um, we, um, so we're probably putting in as much money as the house is worth, worth right now, which is to us a risky investment. But also, we want you to know that we're intending to stay there until our kids are in, at least in college, and they're 10 and 5 right now. So this is a, a family project. Um, we, that the dormer, um, 
there's kind of three reasons why we would love uh, to keep it the way as it is in the plans. Um, one is, is really aesthetically, right? Right where um, it goes on the, the addition that's already there. Uh, if we put in that two foot inset, I mean, obviously it's obvious that, um, you know, we did that for historic, but it's going to have this really awkward two foot ledge, right? So, and through talking to all the neighbors, you know, they're totally okay with, you know, uh, having it on top of the existing structure. Two is a safety issue for us. We want windows in that in that um, part of uh, the dormer. Uh, and you guys have kids. Um, a ledge like that is just so attractive for them to climb up on. There's a couple of trees next to it. Um, you know, I, we feel s for security purposes, we're probably going to have to put something up there uh, to stop them doing that. Um, and then three is a cost thing. Um, in setting that dormer, two feet uh, requires pretty substantial uh, uh, engineering and, and a beam put in underneath it, plus um, a lot of drainage on that flat roof, uh, which you can see. You can see how the flat roof is engineered at the moment uh, in those pictures at the back of the packet we handed out. Um, so those are our, our three things we'd like you to consider uh, and, and hopefully uh, approve us leaving it um, as is in the plans. Uh, here's uh, my wife to present uh, Brent and Tony's letters. Hi. One other reason, uh, when Joe mentioned the safety, yes, we have two kids that we don't want to go out of a door wall over the, the, the edge of this house. Um, but in talking to our, dis our architect and contractor, we would have to put up, for safety purposes, probably some sort of railing. And that railing will look quite modern, as opposed to what we're proposing here by keeping it just on that um, the sight line. Um, so one thing I do also want to note, building on what Joe said, is that when we moved to Nashville eight years ago from Boston, we looked at a lot of different neighborhoods, and we both were very committed to East Nashville. It was either East Nashville or we don't move to Nashville. So we're very committed East Nashvilleans. And we chose our architect and our contractor specifically because they work not specifically in East Nashville, but they do a ton of work in this neighborhood. So they're committed to historic, they're committed to this neighborhood, and they're committed to making sure that it doesn't um, get changed for the worse. So the first letter I'll read is from Brent Hunter. He's our architect at 1521 Russell Street, Nashville, Tennessee. The name of his company is Archinerd. He says, Dear Board of Commissioners for the Metropolitan Historic Zoning Commission of Nashville and Davidson County, Thank you to the board and staff for allowing me to give my professional opinion for the renovation and addition at 949 Maxwell Avenue. I cannot be at the meeting today as I'm at a funeral of my grandmother. 949 Maxwell Avenue is an infill lot with an existing home that sits tight to the western side setback and is more than 10 feet off the eastern side setback. The western side has an obscured view to the rear given its proximity to the neighboring house. At the rear of the western side setback is the location of an existing two and a half story parapet wall. Staff at MHZC have requested a two feet inset above this parapet wall. If the new designs were to meet the requests of the staff, the result would articulate the parapet wall as a historic feature. Parapet walls are not common historic features in this neighborhood. The two feet inset would also include providing structural support from the top floor through the existing main living space and through the basement entry at the rear. These are existing spaces that cannot easily or affordably handle the beams that would be required while maintaining the integrity of the existing home. It is in my professional opinion that the two feet inset as requested by MHZC staff would be an unnecessary financial burden given the existing conditions and it would detract from the overall character of the home. Given the unique nature of the existing two and a half story parapet wall at the rear, the location of that wall behind the main roof and the view to that wall being blocked from the road due to the smaller side yard at the western side setback, I request that the commission override the staff recommendation and grant permission based on the design as submitted. Sincerely, Brent Hunter. And the second letter that I'm going to read right now is from Tony Hirsch, who's a principal at Artisan Build Construct which is at 935 East Trinity Lane in Nashville, Tennessee. Dear Board of Commissioners for the Metro Nashville Historic Zoning Commission of Nashville and Davidson County, thank you for allowing the opportunity to submit my professional opinion for the proposed renovation in addition at 949 Maxwell Avenue. We understand the nature of the commission's staff recommendation to put two feet inset on the new proposed second floor wall above the existing main floor wall. 
However, as the general contractor proposing the necessary repairs and restoration of the house, it is my opinion that the necessary inset requested would require reconstruction of the parapet wall, waterproofing, drainage, and rebuilding of a code and life safety fall prevention rail system compliant to the existing rooftop access. The overall effect of the rail system will create a non-historically accurate exterior facade. The existing parapet wall appears to be constructed of nominal lumber, not original to the house, rubber and metal flashing, and thermoplastic polyolefin membrane, TPO, roofing, and looks to have been added sometime in the 1990s based on observed building materials. Sorry if I messed up those terms. The existing historic home is constructed of true dimensional old growth lumber. The interior load paths required to inset the dormer two feet will create a substantial cost burden to the owners. The estimated total reconstruction costs include roofing, drainage, point load piers footing, and necessary beams and floor girder system. With new interior finishes to enclose the structural beams would represent an estimated material and labor burden of an additional $28,000. The owners and architectural team have made great effort to present and propose a plan in keeping with the historic Maxwell Ave street and overall neighborhood. Thank you for consideration, Tony Hirsch. Thank you all. Um, open, thank you for your comments. Uh, open public hearing. Anybody wish to speak regarding this project? Close public hearing. Commissioners, discussion? Um, I want to thank the applicant for providing, providing this picture. It's very helpful to understand the existing condition. Um, this is, I guess, kind of a, a really weird addition that was done to the house that's not very typical of residential construction to have this, like, flat parapet roof um, on the back. And I completely understand why staff wants to inset the dormer because that is what we do to the letter of the law. In this condition, I feel like in setting the dormer, it, it, it just it provides a really weird condition with this existing parapet roof. And I feel like the way that it's designed, it just makes this parapet addition go away. And, and you don't, you no longer really realize that that was the condition. Um, so I think, I think as, I would recommend to approve it as designed. I completely understand why the staff had to had to make that recommendation, but it's going to make just a condition that I feel like looks even less historic than if they added on to added on to the footprint of this. Um. I I agree with uh, you, Commissioner Fitz. It's just such an interesting condition um, as the house is currently, and you know. Uh, We've all told, I've been one to tell, you know, applicants, if you can't do it within the letter of the law, then, you know, maybe you just can't do it. But in this case, I think it's such a small addition. You know, they're not asking for some huge monstrous thing. And and I, I do agree with Commissioner Fitz's thoughts on the design of it. And I didn't uh, scroll all the way back or page all the way back to this photo. Um, so now that I'm looking at it, um, yeah, it looks like you're on like a roof on Broadway, not a, <laughs> a house on Maxwell Avenue. So with that, with those two things in mind, the specific home, um, I also agree that I think allowing it kind of as designed uh, will have a better outcome for this specific home. Yeah, I echo Commissioner Fitz and Commissioner Jones' comments. I mean, picture speak, a thousand words. I think in this case, of course, you know, inset two feet is the right thing to do, but thinking about water, uh, gutter, and how to you know, deal with safety. I, I, I th I'm very compelled by the applicant uh, reasoning. And so I think we, especially uh, this rear addition and based on the each neighborhood really not visible from the street, so I think we it is appropriate to have some kind of uh, special exception in this case. So I'm moved by the applicant uh, argument in this case. If there are no other thoughts uh, from other commissioners, I'll go ahead and uh, regarding 949 Maxwell Avenue, I move for approval of the project 
with all staff recommendations except for recommendation number one. Um, I move to approve the dormer uh, as designed. Uh, second from uh, Commissioner Johnson. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Good. Uh, motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Sure. I do have two things for you before you, before you run off. I, there's been several handouts. I got the last one, but there's been a couple of other handouts. If I could get just at least one copy of that just to keep in our records, I would appreciate it. And then I also wanted to introduce to you Ann Mickelson, who's, who's still who's hanging out with us for today. This is day one with Metro Legal, and she'll be our legal counsel from here on out. Excellent. Great to have you with us. So Thank be you. sure to give her a hard time next time. Thank you. It's always interesting. We tried to be easy on you today. <laughs> Sometimes it's not that way. <laughs> Anything else? That's all I had. Thank you. Great. Thanks, Ms. Ziegler. I appreciate everybody. Appreciate the staff and, uh, and everybody and the commissioners. Appreciate everyone's thoughtfulness and uh, diligence and all this. This has been a service of the Metro Nashville Network. If you would like to see this presentation again, or for more information about this and other programs, visit nashville.gov.